good hot 50 percent <laughs> oh i'm katie i'm garrett and uh we hope you all had a nice thanksgiving we are as usual recording this a few weeks early so it's just after thanksgiving for us um because we're time travelers now we are yeah we are time travelers and uh squealing into the holiday season and Christmas time and all of the stress that comes with the holidays. Yeah, so in that vein, I thought that it would be worthwhile to cover burnout um, since it affects everybody, not just people with ADHD, but having ADHD or another neurodivergent diagnosis can really exacerbate both how you experience burnout and how quickly you experience burnout. So Hmm. it can make your... ADHD symptoms more severe, but it can also make it harder for you to come back from that burnout. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. I thought you'd be inspired. Yeah, can't, can't wait. (laughs) Love the holidays. (laughs) Um, Before we get started on that, though, uh, it just occurred to me that we should probably cover a few housekeeping things. Um, Thank you, everybody who has signed up for Patreon. And thank you, everybody who has... um, purchased our merch oh my god we are so excited about this merch like every time i see one of you guys posting about it and tagging us in your posts i like vomit rainbows i cannot help it i've seen it yeah it's super cute and um freaks out my cats to no end but (laughs) (laughs) and it's something we've been waiting to do for like months so we were really really excited to get it up and running and out there totally and um, yeah, so thank you so much to everybody who has already purchased merch. Um, it's still on our website. And the more of more merch that we sell, more of you who buy our merch, the more we'll be able to produce down the line. And we have some really good ideas that we'd love to get into your hands. Um, so yeah, that's And if you exciting. have ideas for merch, shrunken heads, G-strings, just let us know. <laughs> we can. Both of those suggestions came from the same person, just to be clear. <laughs> It's not that multiple people are suggesting uh, (laughs) cursed items like that. (laughs) Just Uh, one in particular. (laughs) Oh, man. But, um, yeah, no, we've had a very exciting couple of weeks. So thank you, everybody, um, for your support. Every single comment or share um, really does make a difference and every single five star rating. So mm-hmm. steal your friends' phones, subscribe them on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever. Slam in that five star review. Um <laughs> mash it. Against their will. They don't know. They don't have to know that you're doing it. Difference. Yeah. Um, you know, people leave people get drunk, they leave their phones unlocked. Just do it. They're, Just go for it. They'll never know. You like it's not like you get months. an email confirmation being like, right? hey, you're now subscribed. <laughs> no, I do you? You don't. <laughs> Um, that you're now subscribed to the Bar's Ankle High. And so what if the, now they're subscribed? Now they're going to start listening and get some cool tips and, you know, learn about what our animal Olympic team would be comprised of. So, like, everybody wins. Yes, it is truly a win-win-win. <laughs> yes. Win-win. <laughs> five. There's five layers of winning to it. Yeah. Um... So yeah, those are just the housekeeping things. And also, um, I know that you've heard it the past few episodes, but you've also heard it for this episode, but that cool holiday remix of our theme song is available on Patreon as a ringtone to put on your phone. You can use it as an alarm clock like I do, or your regular ringtone like I also do. And um... Year round, 12 (laughs) months out of the year. And she definitely screamed when she heard it. I for sure did. Yeah. Um, and if you follow us on Instagram, you've seen the video of me screeching with joy and mm-hmm. the first time I heard it. But um, all Patreons who are $5 anklets or $10 limbo champions get that ringtone. 
So um, you can sign up for our Patreon at thebarisanklehigh.com. Nope. <laughs> you can sign up for... Ooh, that was a Garrett moment she just had. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it in real time. <laughs> so now you know what I see. <laughs> yep, all the time. Saying it and then going, nope. <laughs> nope, that's not it. And actually, I also do that via text. <laughs> autocorrect gets me every time. <laughs> so Katie just had a brain autocorrect. That's what just <laughs> I did, yes. So you can sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high, or there's a link to it on our website at the bar is ankle high.com. <laughs> Put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. So help me indeed. <laughs> So, on to burnout, unless you had any other <laughs> housekeeping stuff. No, I think that's, uh, I think that's it. Cool. Um, okay, so generally speaking, burnout is the feeling of physical, emotional, or mental exhaustion, but can also often induce negative feelings or anxious thoughts about the quality of our personal performance or our professional performance, which then creates, like, a doom loop oh. where yep. you feel worse about yourself, you feel more exhausted and then it just keeps like this self-perpetuating cycle of mm. like hatred and mm. um it's like a vortex yes yeah yeah, yeah. a swirling vortex of exhaustion is what burnout is yeah that sounds really unpleasant yeah I so anyway acutely familiar <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> speaking from experience yeah you had a hell of a burnout episode yesterday <laughs> oh. yeah um staring at the wall so these symptoms, though, um, of feeling physically, emotionally, or mentally exhausted can be exacerbated by untreated ADHD or undiagnosed ADHD. Um, now, that's not to say if you are medicating or going to therapy for your ADHD that you're not going to experience burnout. Mm. It's just that if you're not aware of what you're working with as far as having an ADHD diagnosis, then mm. it can be even harder to figure out that you're within a burnout episode. I feel like even... Even with all the things working in your favor, awareness, medication, therapy, whatever it is, people, it still happens. Like sometimes I think it's just the nature of I the think, grind. Yeah. Especially yeah. at this time of year, it's almost Oof. inevitable. Yes. And to an extent, kind of like our multitasking episode, it's almost like expected. Yeah. Like. Doing the most all the time. Right. I, yeah. The exhaustion. So these symptoms can be exacerbated by untreated, blah, 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 that part. And then. The exhaustion is caused by excessive stress or fatigue, like an excessive workload at school or work, frustration, or even dissatisfaction at work. Ooh. Yeah. Which, like, when I read that, I was like, oh, that's where a lot of my burnout can happen. Certainly in the past, like, I love my current job, mm -hmm. but in the past where I've been kind of, like, grinding at work, I hate it. I'm just waiting for to be there long enough that I can, like hopscotch into a better position or you know change law firms altogether or whatever mm -hmm. um then I'm way more likely and I've even had that at school like if I'm not driving with a teacher or professor mm. that I've had it's the worst like oh my it's truly a pulling teeth like yes, it, is, it just, is such a grind even just finding the motivation to like get up to go to class or totally you know whatever it like is it's it's very spiteful that I do like I do it with yes. spite malicious compliance <laughs> yes, malicious compliance perfect yeah that's exactly it mm -hmm. um <laughs> like Michael Scott saying, you know what? I'm going to date her even harder. <laughs> I was quoting Michael Scott a lot uh, the other day, but it was the, um, where he says something's a hate crime and they're like, Michael, that's not a hate crime. He goes, well, I hated it. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm feeling that a lot right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, as I mentioned earlier, everyone experiences burnout. It's not just people who are neurodivergent or who have ADHD. Um, and it can often look like you're suffering from a mental illness like depression because when you're burnt out, you are tired. Like, you feel physically tired or you feel like, I just cannot get my brain to focus, which is a common symptom of depression or anxiety. Um, so... I think that a lot of times that can lend itself to misdiagnosis when it comes to ADHD. Um, cause if you're in these cycles of being burnt out, but it's not like more often than not, it's kind of, I think easier and certainly part of the problem. Like depression is a dopamine issue as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so to say like, well, you sound like you're just depressed or it's seasonal affective disorder or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
it may, may very well be part of that, but like the other part, of factors, correct, yeah. like being overworked and stressed and overtired certainly isn't helping any depression that you might be having. Right. So anyway, but unlike depression or anxiety, which are the result of a chemical imbalance in the brain, um, oftentimes general burnout affects everyone for whatever reason and is not simply cured by a medication or therapy. Yeah, because it's like circumstantial, really. Exactly. Yeah. And I think especially this time of year, part of, like, it definitely happened last year. It's not happening so much so far this year, knock on wood, but um, it's be part of that, like, well, everybody's busy this time of year. Like, mm-hmm. you just have to make it to Christmas Day or you just have to make it to New Year's mm-hmm. and then things will calm down, which is true, but it's sort of like that that myth of like the rat race, like everybody's on the hamster wheel. You just have to keep going and then eventually you'll be quote unquote allowed to slow down. Well, it's like the, the dangling of the carrot. I mean, you're just moving the goalposts and nobody's ever going to get there. And every, but everybody's doing it and everybody's doing it alongside you. So you're like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And you're like, I'm just going to take a long weekend after the holidays and then I'll feel great. Exactly. And it feels very like, um, it's, it's almost encouraged to ignore how you're feeling in favor of continuing the rat race mm-hmm. because that's what everybody else is doing, but that doesn't mean that it's healthy. Because <laughs> you're all sitting together, miserable, tired, burned out, fatigued, feeling yeah. depressed. Yeah. Like, this is great. <laughs> yeah, overall, not great. Um, so some of the things that I – some of the symptoms that I saw that I think could overwhelm very easily with – other mental health um, or comorbid conditions that many people with ADHD do have um, are things like you no longer take interest or derive pleasure from the things that you normally do. Like if you really enjoy coloring in your spare time or something. Which is like the top thing that they list for depression. One of like the first exactly. symptoms that they're telling you to look for. Right. Um, you see friends or allies like your coworkers as enemies who are burdening you with more and more work, even if they're just asking you like regular task items. Oh God. Uh huh. <laughs> just continue. I don't relate to any of this. <laughs> um, and you withdraw or isolate because it feels impossible to get things done, which uh-huh. like is so depression to me, yeah. like very much when I was in the depths of my depression. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Like, I just, I filled my time as much as possible. Like, I had two jobs. And when I didn't have any work to do, I did my best to spend as much time alone as possible. Like, mm-hmm. so anyway, it could also just be burnout. It wasn't for me in that in that exact case. It wasn't. But... Right, but if this is like a cycle, especially around the holidays, something that's cyclically happening, especially with seasonal affective, like... Yes. Yeah. Um, however... ADHD, having ADHD does make it a lot easier to burn out because we're already working so much harder than our, our neurotypical peers to do those same things with that they can do with far less effort. Right. So we're already, um, one of the, the metaphors I saw was like, okay, so imagine everybody is on a bicycle, like they each have their own bicycle and you're Mm -hmm. all just traveling down the road together. I was picturing a very long tandem bicycle with like (laughs) seven people on it. (laughs) No, no, no. You all have your separate bicycles. Yep, yep, yep. That makes more sense. But folks with ADHD are in a lower gear, so they have to pedal faster to keep up with gotcha. the neurotypical people who can pedal once and go 10 feet, whereas me with ADHD, I pedal once on my lower gear and mm-hmm. I go one and a half feet. So it's I have like to... using a tricycle where you're like, the yes. rotations are so much smaller with a smaller wheel and a smaller like gear that it's spinning on. Yes. So you're doing all these little tiny baby rotations yes. instead of big powerful ones. Yeah. Um, on your seven person tandem bike. <laughs> on the tandem bicycle. It's like the bicycle from the cartoon version of the Grinch where they're all like oh, yeah, riding just around like the going house. And going like all the who's on it. Yeah, yeah. With the drums and all that shit. Yep. That's actually what our brains look like. It's just one of us on a tandem bicycle. Yes. With drums and shit. Yes. Yeah. And then there's Katie in the corner with Christmas lights for eyeballs. Yeah. Which is my my sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> <laughs> Waking up to see Kate, Katie standing in the corner with glowing eyeballs. Oh, <laughs> Worse. <laughs> Worse. Now that's for sure what will be in my nightmares. 
worse than Tim Burton. Yeah, it's like the Christmas version of Coraline. If it was a horror movie. Yeah. About a sleep paralysis demon. Yeah, that sounds pretty horrible. But anyway. uh, Anyway, If any of you are animators out there and feel like using that as a drawing prompt, by all means. Yeah, or don't. Or don't, because no one no one needs to see uh, Katie as a demon, as do a it, Christmas it, demon. <laughs> so um, ADHD symptoms like difficulties staying organized, inattention, poor time management, even excessive activity can also exacerbate situations that lead to burnout. Which totally makes sense. Exactly. This was like, honestly, like as far as having this episode at the end of the year when we've done all these episodes so far... It was almost like a greatest hits. Like it was yeah. all yeah, it really like is. covering like things that we that make burnout worse and yeah. make it happen to us faster and whatever. So anyway, um hyper focusing when we forget to eat or drink water or forget to exercise or have no interest in exercising because of the burnout, um, can increase our feelings of burnout because our basic physical needs aren't being met. Mm. which causes your brain to stress out because it's not getting any food or water, which increases your cortisol hormone hormone production, which increases water retention. So then you feel worse about your body. (laughs) I'm sorry. Garrett's freaking out in hives. (laughs) Which totally isn't a symptom of burnout. Is there anything about hives? I didn't see anything about hives, (laughs) but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that like, if you're just constantly scratching at your skin, <laughs> panicking, that's definitely not going to increase your likelihood of burnout. All right. <laughs> so here's a list of um, ADHD burnout signs and symptoms that I have here. Oh, so uh, this is specific for ADHD. I think so. I think it could really go to all, but I think that we do with experience the these with much... Um, more acuteness than Mm -hmm. a neurotypical person might, especially some of the other, um, you'll see. So, um, okay. So first there's the lack of motivation that we discussed. Um, like if you usually enjoy exercising five days a week, but you just can't even be bothered to put on your sneakers and go for a simple walk. Yep. (laughs) I'm prepared for the other ones. Yeah. You're doing great. I'm ready. (laughs) Where's your palm strip? (laughs) ferociously like yeah. <laughs> don't do that ever again oh, i know I, as soon as i did it i wish i could take it back <laughs> garrett is a champion of making weird finger movements at my face oh, that's very true yeah <laughs> you do it a lot i do do it a lot <laughs> do do I, I sat here today with like my thumbs folded in like four fingers it's true your spouse really called you out on that because i was asking i was looking for something specifically that had four fingers and <laughs> We have a lot of we have a lot of weird things in my house. A lot of weird uh, items. Yeah, we just see weird. I'm like, I see something weird in the store, and I'm like, well, I, I have to buy it now because I laughed about it. So that's how I have a collection of weird items. And I was looking for raptor claws that we had. And Remember back when we said that I'm the one that struggles with impulsivity issues. <laughs> uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Mine may manifest in weird items. <laughs> Katie came over to my desk at work and I have a small uh, finger puppet that is a pink monster that looks like it's screaming with its arms flailing and I had it on my finger. That's how I was talking to her and she stopped me and goes, what is that? <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, it's a finger puppet. <laughs> yeah. It's a finger puppet I bought. Well, uh, like one we'll of my snag a picture items. of that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. It's also like sitting on a dog. So it, <laughs> you know, my, my, my strange items like to interact with one another so it yeah. sits it sits on a dog on my desk there's also a crow finger puppet but that's to be expected so i'm sorry anyway yep so losing motivation <laughs> yeah lack of motivation <laughs> um exhaustion like feeling tired all the time even if you've slept through the night um so coming on the heels of our sleep episodes i there was a lot of points where this i was like oh wow <laughs> <laughs> that marries nicely with our sleep episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good it's a good transition from one to the other. Yeah. So if you know, go back to those episodes and listen to them again if you'd like. Um, but there is that thing of, you know, if you're able to sleep through the night and you're not really struggling with that, but you still feel like exhausted. You need a nap, you wake up. Yeah, yeah, you just can't get enough coffee, whatever. Um, 
if you're you run out of steam early in the afternoon, um, then you know it's possible that you're you're burnt out. And we'll have some tips later on, so don't worry. I'm not just like <laughs> yeeting this information at you and then good luck. Yeah. See you next week. Goodbye. <laughs> Good luck, everybody else. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Signing off. Um, so poor performance and increased lack of focus. Uh, if you feel like no matter how hard you try to focus, you just cannot sit still long enough to do your job, the dishes, any other mandatory task. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, physical pain was something that also came up, which really, really? surprised me. Yeah. So excessive stress can trigger headaches or stomach aches, especially if you find yourself reaching for more coffee than usual, (laughs) which can be really harsh on your stomach and then give you caffeine withdrawals or overload, which would cause a headache. (laughs) Huh. (laughs) There was so much about this when I was researching Mm. it where I was like, oh God, it really is all connected, huh? (laughs) I don't like that. (laughs) Yeah. And also, if you have too much caffeine, that can lend itself to increased irritability, which you're already going to experience when you're tired and burnt out and aren't drinking water or eating normally. Yes. Um, So if you find... overwhelmed. Yeah. I find... I So the tip was like, if you... Not a tip, but if you find yourself like snapping at people then, you know, that's a sign that you're irritated and more irritable than normal. Um, I also find that, like, I lose control of my tone. So, like, the words mm-hmm. I say aren't bad, but, like, the way I say it is like, well, shit, girl. <laughs> like, oh, I'm in, I'm in a perpetual state of cranky. Yeah. <laughs> Just, and, like, which is not how I am, like, most of the time. But when I'm feeling, like, burned out or, you know, it's the winter time and I'm having a tough, and I don't realize it. And then suddenly I'm like, why am I feeling like this i know what happened recently because we don't usually snap at each other but when you had ordered the tote bag from our oh website. she was killing me <laughs> she was <laughs> and i asked garrett like oh that looks like it's really good quality like what do you think like is it a good quality canvas mm-hmm. and you responded and you were like yeah i just feel like the straps are a little thin and i was like do you mean like thin flimsy material or thin Mm -hmm. as in the straps aren't wide enough and she was like I don't know they just feel thin and I was like can you please use a different word I was like like for the size of the bag I think the straps are a little thin meaning and and I mean it was like both it was like they were they're not I didn't think they were wide enough I didn't think they were like a beefy enough strap right and so and I was like can you just but you didn't say that. You were like, I don't know. They just feel like they're too thin. And I was like, can mm-hmm. you use not thin to describe this? Yes. Which was frustrating to me because I was like, I just gave you two separate words to use that and I, two different things. I also I said thought to her, clarify it. I was like, you know, you can just look at it this weekend <laughs> and like make your own. But it was very much that thing where I was yes. like, we are having two different conversations. Yes. Like it's not the end of the world if I don't right. understand what right. you're saying. But it was like. I remember telling PK about it, and I was like, yeah. I just wanted her to use a different word. Yes, and I was like, Jesus Christ, Katie, I don't know, check it out. <laughs> yeah, you got fed up with me real fast. <laughs> I did. I was like, I just... It was also uh, in the middle of Thanksgiving prep. Yeah. Which was uh, overwhelming, because when you're feeling burned out, you get overwhelmed very easily. Yes. Mm-hmm. But you also feel like you can't stop. Yes. Which we'll get to. Oh, good. <laughs> Fun, fun, um, fun. Mood swings is another symptom. Mm-hmm. If you feel like you're kind of weepy for no reason, you have trouble smiling at people or engaging in small talk at work when normally that wouldn't Ooh. really bother you, uh-huh. um, that could be burnout. And then if you're negative or extra pessimistic, when you're burnt out, it can feel... <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is rough. <laughs> it's a rough episode. Uh, when you're burnt out, it can feel impossible to feel positive about anything. This can be exacerbated by RSD and our tendency to ruminate on things that are bothering us. Mm-hmm. Um, which, again, like greatest hits of our episodes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. <clears throat> rough. Um, you know, the more tired we are, the more burnt out we are, the harder it can be to manage our symptoms, even if we're medicated. Um, even if we're going to therapy to work on our symptoms, it can be just really challenging because, you know, our shortened memory shelf can only hold so many things. It can only hold so many priorities. Mm-hmm. And it gets even shorter when you're tired. Um, oh, yeah. And when you're overwhelmed, there's 
when you're overwhelmed. at a a time of year where there's so much more that you have to have on your shelf. And I feel like when you're burnt out, those basic necessities, even if the shelf size doesn't change, those basic necessities take up more space Mm -hmm. because it takes so much more of you to do those things, like to do laundry or to do the dishes or those little basic things that normally you're like, okay, I have my routine where once this hamper gets full, then I do the load of laundry and that's Mm -hmm. the rhythm that I'm in. But then when you're so overwhelmed, you, like it's so easy for me because I'm less than a year out of diagnosis to go back into not seeing the mess and just mm-hmm. stepping over it and being like, okay, I'll, as soon as I leave the room, that mess no longer exists. <laughs> I have no object permanence. Well, glad that's gone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Problem solved. All I have to do is keep the lights off. And, and then I eyes. never see the pile of laundry in my bed. My if bathroom. I put blinders on. I won't see it. Yeah. I wear my sunglasses indoors because I have ADHD. What's that song? You know that one, that big hit by Billy Joel and the E Street Band. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, and Michael McDonald and Kenny Loggins. <laughs> um, all right, so like as we've said several times, medicine is not a cure-all and therapy is not a cure-all. Right. It does take work. And this is a genetic neurological condition that's not curable. We work really hard every day at managing our symptoms, and we know that you guys do too. Um, whether your symptoms are primarily inattention, hyperactivity, disorganization, poor planning, time management issues, emotional dysregulation, anything else that we've covered in our past 17 episodes um you know that's not even counting what symptoms you might also have to manage every day from your comorbid conditions like Mm. depression anxiety ptsd um asd auditory processing disorders anything else that really you could have going on like right there could be any number of things and so you know if you're looking at adhd in a vacuum or you're looking at going to work and getting your work assignments done in a vacuum Okay, right. That doesn't seem so bad. So yeah, having to manage all those other things, they they don't exist in a vacuum. So when you're thinking, okay, I'll just do my laundry on the weekend, except your weekend's cut in half because you're spending all day Saturday with your mom. So then you only have Sunday to do your laundry and house cleaning and dishes Ugh. and prepping for the grocery week shopping. and grocery shopping mm-hmm. And all of those other things. Going through your mail that came in during the week or breaking down boxes or taking out your garbage. I mean, it really, like, stuff accumulates and then you wind up spending all of your downtime doing that, which then just feeds the burnout. That's, like, a solid 30% of that reel I posted of the before and after of cleaning my Mm -hmm. apartment. A solid 30% of that before was, like, three enormous boxes of recycling that I just had to take out to the dumpster. Oh, it's the worst. It was just – and, like – like, I'm, I'm in an apartment building, which for sure is a huge difference for me <laughs> mm-hmm. because it's not just a matter of, like, throwing it into the recycling bin out front, like, outside the door. Right. I have to, like, go through three or four separate oh, it's doors. it's an ordeal. Yeah. yeah. Have out keys. to the dumpster. Right. Yeah. So it's just this whole thing. But in any event. Um, so, yeah, we work really hard at managing our symptoms, but having those comorbid conditions can make it even harder. Mm. Um <clears throat> And I wrote down that personally, when I'm overwhelmed, it becomes very easy for me to forget that I have ADHD. And then I go back to holding myself to those neurotypical productivity standards. Oh, yeah. I do that too. Yeah. And I think part of that, especially for people like us who are diagnosed later in life, is that we have so much practice with masking. Years. (laughs) Yeah. Decades. Decades, in fact. (laughs) Um, that it's so easy for us to just naturally fall back into those habits of masking and trying to hide our ADHD and pretend that everything is fine and we're not struggling. Right. And I mean, part of that is just a trauma response to having masked for so long. Mm -hmm. Part of it is that, you know, (laughs) our realistically, I don't think many people's employers give a shit if you're feeling burnt out oh definitely not yeah um so part of it is that where you're like well my deadline's my deadline like and if you have personal stuff going on you still need to get your work done right yep so um if possible um for sure schedule like regular days off during this time of year if Mm -hmm. you can 
Um, we can usually do that um, at our jobs, but um, so I know that that's not for everybody. Um, and a day where you're you're not doing stuff. Yeah, like an actual day off. Right, because I have a tendency to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to take a Friday off, and I list off uh, a million and one things that I'm going to accomplish, and then I'm exhausted. And yeah. um, I'm mad I didn't get more done, even if I get everything done I was planning on. Yeah, like on the one hand, it's nice to have those things done, mm -hmm. but you, you've taken them off your list. And that right there has a period at the end of it in my head. <laughs> I go, it would be really nice to get those things done, period. So I do them. And then right. I'm exhausted. Which there's nothing wrong though with taking a day off to do all those things, but then mm. also take another day off. <laughs> you right, have right, to right. Do. Yeah, no. My my brain associates if I'm not working, I should be home, do, like eat, still being productive. It's like when we were talking we're, about yes. hobbies. Yeah. Yes, and I was like, oh wait, all of my fun things that I do all are productivity based. Yes. I don't know how to have fun, and yeah. then I spun in the corner with an existential crisis for a good five minutes. You did, yeah, yeah. but not unlike my. My existential crisis when I realized I have... Uh, Intrusive sleep? Yes. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I still think about that all the time. <laughs> intrusively. Yeah. I have intrusive thoughts. I have thoughts intrusive thoughts about, about my intrusive, intrusive sleep. sleep. <laughs> Thriving. Not burned out at all. Mm. Nope. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Put that thing back where it came from. That's so healthy. I was listening to my brother, my brother and me, and somebody was like, I guess the question they asked was like, how do I get better at expressing my feelings? And one of the brothers was like, you're asking the wrong people because we were raised Baptist. And what you do is you bottle up your emotions and you put them in a jar and then you find a bigger jar and you put that jar inside the <laughs> jar. <laughs> it's like in um, Emperor's New Groove. And then that box goes in another box, which goes in another box. <laughs> or to save on postage. <laughs> yes. Oh, anyway. <laughs> oh, God. So masking is a coping mechanism, but it creates a situation where the thing that is stressing us out continues to pile up because we're not addressing it. Mm. We're just pretending that we're okay. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For example, if I personally don't address that I'm struggling with focusing at work, it doesn't change my deadlines at work. It just makes me more stressed. <laughs> makes me more more irritable and more negative and mean to myself when I meet that deadline at the last second. Because it's like, you're such an idiot. How couldn't, you couldn't just get this done. Just focus, which has been my negative self-talk for three and a half decades. Yeah. Because I don't realize until the end of the day. Exactly. Where I'm like, why do I feel so agitated? Yes. And it's like, oh. I almost, I mean, I wouldn't even say that I realize at the end of the day. I realize like, at the end of the week or something, because I feel like a lot of times when I'm especially stressed at work, I have many deadlines right after the other. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm not, if I'm not focusing and I'm not addressing that, I'm not focusing. Mm -hmm. If I don't take steps to help myself refocus, like going for a walk, getting up and eating something, drinking water, st actually stepping away from my computer screen. Yes. And I'm not giving my brain the break that it needs in order to actually process what I'm reading, process the problem and solve it. Right. And like one step at a time. Exactly. I, I think I do have a tendency to, when I'm having a hard time focusing, I'm like, okay, it must just be this case I'm working on. So I'm just going to go to another one. Then I go to another one and I'm struggling getting through it because my focus is so bad that I'm going to another one. And then my brain is like still working on all of the other ones. Yes. So I wind up spinning plates and I think that's that's probably my analogy for this time of year is mm -hmm. constant spinning of plates and, you know, then you hit like New Year's and half well, and how, your plates have broken. <laughs> how many times have you done that and then called yourself lazy for not getting Oh, for sure. Done? And then called myself lazy because I wasn't cleaning up the broken plates on the floor. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Well, so... I think also part of that masking thing is being afraid of looking lazy and looking unproductive. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, we do our best to ignore those feelings of burnout, exhaustion, overwhelm in favor of just trying to like, quote unquote, power through those feelings, <laughs> because, at least for me. And I guess you, <laughs> it feels like it's easier to just try to force myself into a hyper-focus to get through it. But the problem is that I am still 
tired, except now I'm more tired, I'm more hungry, I'm more dehydrated, and I'm more stressed. None of those things have changed the longer I've punished myself with negative self-talk and forcing myself to just tolerate the burnout. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) You're doing great, sweetie. (laughs) You are killing it with your uh, white knuckling of this. (laughs) Yeah. But it's, it's so true. Like it was, as I was researching this, it's, it's that thing where I was like, oh, that's what I do. Like, that's what ultimately burns me out because I don't take those regular breaks in Mm -hmm. general Mm -hmm. and I've gotten better at it, but especially this time of year when everything is crazy. So like when I go home at the end of the day from work, it's not like, okay, now I can relax. It's like, okay, I've got to check the mail. I've got to wrap the presents that came in the mail. I've got to make sure they're labeled. I've got to clean up all the wrapping paper. You wrap paper. them as they come in? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so smart. Except that I'm cleaning up the wrapping paper constantly. Oh, yeah. But yeah. That's true. It, it, it just works for me because also it keeps them hidden, kind of. Like it's oh, a, it's a yeah, fast yeah. way to hide them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just get it done right away. That's smart. Yeah. But yeah, so there's all these other things, though, that you have to do in addition to regular stuff like cooking dinner or exercising or, yeah, exactly. Cleaning my lunch things from the day before at work, like the Tupperware stuff, like cleaning out my lunchbox. Yeah, I, um, to combat that, I got stuff to wash it at work because I felt like I had homework because I was coming home and then having to do dishes to wash all my stuff from the day. I have stuff to wash stuff. At work, like I have a sponge and soap at my desk, but um, I avoid using it because I hate dealing with people in the break room. <laughs> fair, 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 fair. I feel like I'm always just being stared at, like, mm-hmm. yep, oh, whatever. Fair. Um, working in the public sector, guys, is a real gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> if you have ever seen Parks and Rec, <sighs> yeah, they get it's it. like the fourth right. floor. That's where we are. <laughs> That's good. Yep. Um, so since getting diagnosed and especially since starting the podcast, I've definitely gotten better at taking those short breaks and like getting up to go to the bathroom and fill my water bottle and yes, just taking a small walk instead of it being like, okay, my entire lunch break has to be a 30 minute walk. Yes. <laughs> I, you're right. Cause I, I also just recently started doing that where I'm like, okay, but you can go for like 15 or 20 minutes and that's still going to benefit you. Yes. Where I stop holding myself to this, like, I have to take an exactly 30 minute walk. Which um, is like, yeah. Such a Weight Watchers thing. Yes. Like, because you earned activity points yep. based on how long you did something. Yeah. Not like, like, you got zero points if you did a 10 minute walk. Mm-hmm. Which, mm-hmm. yep. Yep, yep, yep. And, um, and I think also, really, probably just doing the podcast has made me more aware of. You've been sitting here for three hours and you haven't moved. And yeah. And you need to maybe eat something because you were hungry like 40 minutes ago and then you're like, oh yeah, I have to stop and eat something and then you kept going. Yes. So I think I am getting a little bit more aware of things like that. And it, it does it does make it where I do check in with myself a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And Still also, not great, but better. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, right. I... Progress, again, not perfection. Yes, exactly. And... Even taking um, that break, that five-minute break to come up for air, Mm -hmm. take a sip of water, and then just, like, rewrite your to-do list Mm. so that you can just kind of reorganize your priorities based on how much more time you have left at the workday, how much more time you have left at home to finish all the chores you wanted to finish. Like, reassess your priorities throughout the day. That's a good idea. Yeah. is really helpful for me. You're right. Um, I think I do tend to do, like, a morning and afternoon list, but it's not a conscious thing. Yeah. I do wind up kind of reassessing, okay, second half of the day, like what have I done? What took longer than I expected? What was last time? Sometimes I've done things that I just haven't taken off my list because I was just like in it. Yeah. In the mix. So yeah, I think that's good too is like kind of checking in and reassessing. And also sometimes looking at it being like, why do I have this on my list for today if I don't have to do this for a week? Mm-hmm. Like totally. this is something I can definitely take care of, you know, in two days when I know I'm going to be less busy. Yeah. And to try and pile it on today. Which is something that I use the reason, one of the reasons that I use post-it notes for my to-do list is so that I can stick them to the day in my day planner that I want to do them on. Oh yeah. So I just like move them down the the line there. Yeah. 
Um, but they're like someplace safe now. There's very frequently times where I'd never reopen my day planner. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, I have a planner. Right. And then, like, that. a week later, I'm like, oh, yeah, I had that to-do list. And everything's already been done on it. Yes. But it at least can move things out of my line of sight so that I'm not inundating myself with mm-hmm. my to-do list. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right. So here's some coping stuff. Going to need it. Clearly. Yeah. Need it. Um, so we, we just talked about, like, prioritizing things. Um, we've... But part of that is, like we've talked in previous episodes, when you say yes to one thing, you have to say no to something else. I've been doing better with that. Good. Yeah, I was invited to join a cookie exchange, and I said, you know what? I do not have the available time or mental space to make 10 dozen cookies. That's fucking crazy. I'm so glad yeah. nobody's bothered to invite me. They know I have cats. They yeah, it's just it's just too much. I was like, you know what? I, if I didn't have a thousand other things going on, yeah, sure. But I just can't. Shan't. <laughs> Shont. Shont. <laughs> I scrimped. <laughs> um, but yeah, so figuring out, you know, your priorities is so mm-hmm. important. And even just touching base with yourself in a not sexual way, that sounded so gross. Yeah, it was kind of like when I was talking about thumbing my comp strip. Yeah. So sorry, guys. <laughs> Sometimes we do gross things. <laughs> Also in Arrested Development when they, like, made the brother-in-law record himself (laughs) so that he could hear every time he said something inappropriate. And he's like, I just blew myself. Oh, I hear it. (laughs) I hear it now. Was that Tobias the Never Nude? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) In the shower crying with jean shorts. I wear them under everything. That's, you know what, actually... So, never nude in the shower with jean shorts crying is a good example of burnout. <laughs> yeah, I would say that, that's, that's Are you a feeling good on a scale of, of how one, I feel overwhelmed? Yeah, one to jean shorts crying in the shower. Where are you at? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm in the middle pretending to be a chicken. Yeah. Yeah. We're all there sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Or earlier, uh, Katie was pretending to be the bell on a boat. <laughs> that was also a haunting noise. It was, it was, yeah. I was the, the, the boat that I was on was the, the Flying Dutchman. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why it was so haunting sounding. Yeah. dang a clang 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 Like yeah. that. Yeah, it was. But way louder. It was, it was way louder. Um, but it would definitely alert people. So it would be effective. You would be alarmed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a good way to put it. Um, so okay. make sure if you don't have the available mental or time to be a alarm bell on a boat that you decline. Yeah. Yeah. It's not for everybody. Yeah. Say no if you need to say no. Um, part of that is our next tip. Know your limits. Um so I recommend, uh, as we have in the past, working with a therapist regularly because mm. they can really help you identify what your limits are because it can just be so much as saying, like, I just don't know, like, I've got this, 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 and this going on. And it, it you kind of just need that third party to be like, hey, what if you, like, are you able to decline or cancel on the cookie exchange or mm. whatever you're supposed to go to? Can you just postpone that like say hey what if we did a february cookie exchange instead because i'm kind of all sugared out at the moment or Mm -hmm. something like you know and but having that therapist to help you prioritize and learn how to prioritize on your own is really helpful um and when you see foresee a particularly busy season or month coming up remember our time management tips from I don't know, episode four or something. No, four was totally me. Five, probably. Yeah, somewhere. I don't know. One of somewhere them. in the single digit episodes, we yeah. talked about it. Um, for everything you say yes to, you have to take off something from your list. So, um, when possible, when you see that busy season coming up, consider from your past experiences. Okay, I know that I can commit to two events per week like and however you want to define an event and have that going Leaving into the house. season <laughs> putting on a bra 
Just kidding. Have that thought going into the season so that you don't, you know, come up for air and realize, oh, fuck, I've committed to 19 different things and all I want to do is curl into a ball and sleep for three days straight. It's gob. I've made a terrible mistake. (laughs) 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 It gets me every time. Uh, Garrett loves gob. I do. (laughs) Just me and gob. Me and gob. Yeah, you, Gob, and Rick and Morty. <laughs> and teeny verse. Never nude. <laughs> teeny verse. Um, so part of learning to say no, though, is creating space in your own life to get rest. So mm. it's not just a matter of saying no and filling it with a productivity uh-huh. task, Garrett. I have my PhD in that, actually. <laughs> it's funny you mention it. <laughs> I don't know why you thought of me. I mean, I don't know why. <laughs> um. So... That means, like, something that is, I mean, I would say kind of frivolous, like reading a book, getting your nails done, just going for a quote-unquote lazy walk, like a slow walk where you're not out there to, like, break a sweat Mm. on purpose. Um, That's another one I've been working on. Do something that is not at all quote-unquote productive and give yourself permission to not be productive. Um, Like, throw on the new Beyonce album. Mm-hmm. find a podcast to binge re-binge our podcast we don't mind <laughs> um but, or put your phone in do not disturb and go for a walk without headphones on at all and mm-hmm. just have the silence and for me putting my phone in do not disturb is critical like yeah i'll listen to a podcast but i have to put my phone in do not disturb because otherwise like the buzzing or whatever will just constantly interrupt me and it'll mm-hmm. it even if it's not buzzing i'm going to be checking my phone which I don't find myself doing when I'm in do not disturb mode. Well, they said that there's that like, um, like fan like a phantom buzz almost, where mm-hmm. you're just so accustomed to constantly checking and answering, you know, notifications that your brain gets to the point where it thinks it's sensing a notification almost yeah. and triggering you to then go look. Um, I had a point that I was going to make. Oh. One of the things uh, that I've been doing recently is going for a walk and not pushing myself to be at a fast pace, but Mm -hmm. also making me put my head up because I have a Mm. tendency to look down. Yeah. Be like, like kind of ruminating on things, you know, processing with my head down. And I have to literally like coach myself through rolling my shoulders back and putting my head up and looking up being like, okay, green space. Like you're looking at trees, you're looking at the sky, you're looking at clouds, birds. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Um, very good at looking at my feet. Yeah. And not having headphones in. So you're hearing like birds and animals. And I think it definitely helps Hmm. kind of, uh, it makes it a more grounding experience than to be walking with earbuds in head down fast, which is kind of my baseline. Yeah. Especially when I'm walking at work. Mm -hmm. Uh, I keep my head down in an effort to avoid uh, unhoused people propositioning me to murder them for their life insurance. Remember when that happened? Oh, you know what? Um, I do. (laughs) I had forgotten about it until just now. I did too. And then PK mentioned it to me recently. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I uh, am more likely to see somebody getting uh, a beach in the car when I'm outside work. We walk in very different parts of the city. This was right behind the building. Oh. Um, in the loading dock? Yeah, they were driving by. I didn't oh. tell you the story? No, I thought you meant like they were parked in the loading no. dock. Okay. No, they <laughs> drove by. My version was way more terrifying. <laughs> no, they drove by with the window down. Huh. Um, and it's just, it took me a minute to register what I was seeing. So I think the person driving watched me realizing what I was seeing which ended with me standing with my mouth open like horrified and that guy was like yeah just like that right that's exactly how it's done perfect less teeth yeah and then I uh (laughs) didn't scream but almost did yeah no mine was I was walking into work one day and a clearly unhoused person asked me if I would marry him and I said sorry I have a boyfriend And he said, it's okay, I'll be dead in six months, and you can collect the life insurance. And I was like, I can't imagine you'd be getting life insurance if you're going to be dead in six months. 
And he was like, no, I've got the letter right here. And now granted, I didn't stop to talk to this person. I continued walking, but Mm. he kind of like trailed along next to me. Oh, I love when that happens. Yeah, it was super cool. And so base, like what I could discern from what he was saying through slurred speech, which was the other part of this at 8.30 in the morning. early. Yeah. Um, (laughs) He, I think he just received like one of those solicitation letters in the mail or something or found a solicitation Mm -hmm. letter and concluded that that was a foregone uh, situation where he was going to be insured for up to $50,000. But he did promise that if I married him that... (laughs) In six months, I'd be so sad when he died because I'd be in love with him by then. And that's so a, that's a big, big promise. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. And uh, I, I mean, are you feeling regrets? Are you feeling regrets? I am not. PK might be upset that <laughs> I didn't go for it. It's <laughs> like all I'm saying. He's like Katie. <laughs> that this thing scheme of like, could work. They're golden retrievers. I got them for us. <laughs> <laughs> they retrieve gold. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, but also, so the last kind of tip I have, or last couple tips. Um, the first one is, you know, if something, if you find that something isn't working for you, then take steps to change it. If you find that going for a walk at work is stressing you out, then don't go for a walk. Mm. You know, take stretch take some deep breaths um get something to eat um and you know it could be as simple as also kind of like switching up your diet include something in your lunch at work that you really really love to eat Mm. um so that you have something to look forward to and a reason to take a break in the middle of your day and kind of like reset and go from there um and I know that we've like mentioned this before as far as like scheduling but We really, like, even though it's kind of a counterintuitive thing, ADHDers really do strive, uh, or, nope, (laughs) ADHDers really thrive, Mm. (laughs) there it is, Um, with having, like, routines and structure. Mm -hmm. So um, scheduling breaks into your work schedule, into your chore schedule at home, whatever, you're doing is really, really helpful. Set a timer for three hours and then take a 30 minute break to eat something, drink some water, reassess your to-do list, see what you've already accomplished, Mm -hmm. what needs to be done if something else has come up. If something has come up in doing your to-do list that is going to take longer, remove other things from your to-do list so that they're not still there Mm -hmm. staring back at you disappointed that you didn't get to them for the day. Wagging their finger. Yeah. Right. Um, But also figure out what you're going to do for that break. So have Mm -hmm. kind of like a list of things that give you joy. If it's watching an episode of Schitt's Creek and having that on deck, um, watching part of a comedy special or something on YouTube, um, something like that where you can have that on deck ready to go. And then that in itself is kind of like a self-time break when that's over. Your break is over, you can get back to work, but it right. gives you something that's completely different than what you're doing before. I also did read that one tip a while that we mentioned like in a previous episode at some point, um, where the recommendation was to not have have set times but make them inconsistent. Yeah, I was thinking so, of that. Yeah, so that it's not like, you know, okay, I'm gonna do this for two hours and then I'm gonna take a fifteen minute and then I'm gonna do, you know, Another two hours two and hours. fifteen. Yeah. yeah. But to do like, you know, okay, I'm going to, the next like 30 minutes, I'm going to be doing this and then I'm going to take a five minute break and then I'm going to spend 15 minutes doing this and I'm going to take another couple minute break and step away. Yeah. Um, And mixing it up so that you don't have that set hard interval break time. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's having those options of things you can do that are different lengths of time Mm -hmm. for that break time so that you're not, because I think what happens for me a lot in fact, what I know happens to me a lot. <laughs> I don't think I know. <laughs> is um, like I'll get to that break time at work or whatever and think, oh, I'm not hungry. I don't have to take a break. And mm-hmm. I just keep going. And then I get way too hungry or I have to pee way too bad. Yep. And you get to that point rather than just saying, this is the break. I take the break and then I come back. Like even if it's 
a five minute break to go to the bathroom and mm-hmm. fill my water bottle, run up and down the flight of stairs once mm-hmm. carefully so I don't dent my leg again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or in just her little padded corner. The padded corner that she's currently sitting in because we were having some audio troubles earlier. Yeah, we did. We spent like three hours trying to yes. set up to record this episode, guys, for no identifiable reason. Yeah, we don't really know why. Uh, nothing changed. <laughs> we hope you like this episode because woof, did we do our best to get this out to you. <laughs> we would we would regroup and think, okay, we finally got it. We listen back and we're like, God damn it. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, check in with yourself. Are you hungry? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) But yeah, so set those, those timers. Yes. Are you tired? Yes. Let's, we should do like we did the RSD checklist. (laughs) We should do a a burnout checklist right now. (laughs) Are you feeling tired? Yes. (laughs) Are you feeling stressed? Are you feeling unsure? Do you have stomach ache? Lack of motivation? (laughs) Are normal things that bring you joy not bringing you joy? It's just whispers at the end. A yes. single tear rolling down our cheeks. Yeah, we're definitely that emoji of the smiling with tear right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, which is really fitting, you know, honestly, very fitting for a burnout episode, all in all. Mm. Yeah. It really worked out the way it needed to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So as we were talking yesterday, did we tell the story of how you sat down? No, I don't think we did. So. I don't know what story you mean. Um. Garrett and I were working separately yesterday, and <laughs> on our own notes, Garrett, we shared the to our story. At this point, it's like three weeks ago, so you can't see it anymore. But <laughs> oh, that's true. But that's shared it to the story. She had her whole setup. She was watching YouTube videos and doing her research, and we were texting and was like, "Okay, so I had planned to do burnout, and I was doing my notes for burnout." And she's like, "Well, I can still do X, Y, Z." Um, if you want, and then we can record this other thing we had to record. Um, so whatever. And I was like, well, look, I'm good to go on burnout. So like, you let me know. And, uh, I was like, yeah, I'll let you know later today. It'll be fine. Right. And so like a few hours go by, I didn't hear anything, which isn't unusual. And then <laughs> in the evening, I texted you to make sure I had the right arrival time for mm, today. Yep. And you were like, um, I didn't get anything done. <laughs> yeah, I... Really did all of the things, all of my Furby activities to get myself comfortable. And I was like looking forward to it. I was like, I can't wait to sit when the house is quiet and work on all my stuff. Because I love, I love prepping my episodes and yeah. doing all the research. I really enjoy it. Um, and got like three sentences done and was like, <laughs> whew, man, I'm tired. <laughs> Maybe I should lay on the couch and stare at the ceiling for an hour. <laughs> Mm. Uh, and that's kind of how the whole day went turns out uh holidays are taxing yeah so i would say that your burnout really affects your ability to focus oh like yes i didn't really i just registered it as i'm tired from thanksgiving the day before um but when you started listing things off uh, a little while ago i realized that i was 100 percent burned out yesterday yeah, I, I, it is especially my focus that just yeets itself into the sun when I'm right off out. a cliff. Like it is, it is, there's nowhere to be found. Like focus, never heard of her. Yeah. Like, who is that? Mm-mm. Not me. Yeah. yeah. 100%. So, um, yeah, I was surprised. I mean, it makes sense that that's a symptom of burnout, but it's also a, like, just like ADHD, like, like you say it, it makes sense, but it's like, it didn't occur to me to say it to myself. Yes. And did I do any of the things that I would do that would normally help me, like going for a walk or moving from the spot I was in or drinking water or eating something? No. Nope. Didn't do any right. of those things because so I didn't have the energy to. The energy and you don't even have the energy to say like, no, I don't need to get this done right now. Yeah. No. There is more time no. in the day for me to do this later after mm-hmm. I take care of those things and recharge um well stay tuned because in the next um few weeks we're going to be covering some other seasonal topics we'll have a christmas episode um we're going to talk about some seasonal effective um and obviously let us know if there's something you want to hear us uh ramble about yeah and keep commenting on our instagram stuff i fucking love it um but yeah uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, mostly Instagram, but uh, or the dumpster fire that is Twitter. 
but you know, actually, by the time this episode airs, maybe Twitter won't be around anymore. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's a pretty good chance. But most importantly, our merch store will still be there, so you can still order your goodies, your tortellinis, and your mugs, and your totes with the thin handles. And remember, be kind to yourself because burnout happens. Yeah. Take time to actually rest mm-hmm. because the bar is ankle high. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be here next Thursday with a brand new episode to delight your brain juices. In the meantime, the best way to support us is to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast streaming platform. You can keep up with us during the week on Instagram and Facebook at The Bar is Ankle High and on Twitter at Ankle High Pod. If you want even more Ankle High hot takes in your life and have a few dollars to spare, consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash The Bar is Ankle High. $5 Anklets and $10 Limbo Champions get access to our bonus episodes full of our karaoke attempts, Am I the Asshole discussions, and wondering how we even managed to survive this long. Folks in our Limbo Champion tier also get access to ad-free episodes every single week. In the meantime, remember to be kind to yourself because the bar is ankle high.